everybody. It's a beautiful sunny Sunday morning and the snow is melting and the sun is so beautiful reflecting off the sun. Oh, it's about time. Spring is here. <laughs> well, almost, almost. And I'm glad to be here with you this morning too. So, Tuesdays and Fridays are the days, because I asked at the local grocery store that gets their orchids in, um, when their organ delivery was going to be, and they said, Tues, uh, they said Friday, it's Tuesdays and Fridays, but he said he ordered, and they weren't in Friday morning, so Saturday morning, we ran down there and uh, got a beautiful white orchid for... Jack's pot. I couldn't wait to do it and this is probably the last big one I'm buying because I have a few small minis I need for empty pots and then it's just going to be keeping up on what I have because I mean I could get carried away. <laughs> so here's the tag off of it and it was from Save On Grocery here in Salmon Arm. So I'm going to share another reed pot in case um, um, there's a lot of new people and uh, I thought, well, you know, you learn something and so do I almost every time I do this. So let's get out. And I put my pruning scissors underneath the fire and also wipe them with alcohol. So better to be prepared. Now. Why did I pick this orchid? Well, because I was there early and got the choice, I soaked it in the pot. I put it in this morning in a pot of water. This is the pot it came in. And I was just soaking it till now. And I don't know if you can, no, you can. Mom's been up at 94. She's got one, two, three, five pots of vegetables and company for dinner tonight. <laughs> she's been busy too. She said she's pooped. She's gone downstairs. So uh, let's get at it. And I picked this one because lots of leaves. Uh, look at all the leaves. Uh, I'm not kidding. I mean, two, four, six, eight, maybe ten leaves. Two older ones on the bottom. And also I'll show you up close because it's good to, of course I just washed the floor, Carolyn. I did. I did housework this morning. I'm coming your way. <laughs> okay. Because I want to show you why I picked this one. Because I looked at all the beautiful, there's aerial roots. There's healthy roots down there and healthy leaves. So we're going to see what is inside. And this, <laughs> I'm always happier if I can get them as soon as they get in the store because, I mean, it's just a grocery store and you can't control who's looking after them and what they're doing. So, um, we're ready to go. And I always change from the moss to bark um, because for me, in, in our situation, I think our normal house temperature is between 70 and 72. And our average humidity is probably at 50, sometimes 40 some, sometimes 65. So that's our average humidity, except in the little area where um, I keep orchids under humidity situation. Now this pot had no air holes. The bottom is pretty bad. And uh, that's one reason I soaked it. So here we are. The pot is off. And uh, let's get, oh, of course there's, you know they must, they have these in something else. This just came off in a layer off the outside. And you can see where the older pot was, it's right inside, and this is where we run into our problem. Now, uh, in the greenhouses, they haven't got time to uh, baby them, and they put them in the moss so they can 
If they grow them that way, they, they hold moisture longer. You know, and it's good if you can get moss cheaply, and we can't, and uh, if you can get moss cheaply, and it works for you, then good. But uh, here, I have just had so much luck with the bark that, uh, and this is just caked in here. I'm coming again. <laughs> I have to try to get this so that um, the sun isn't reflecting, but it is packed. Now, for aerial roots, how do they breathe in that? You know, you can see, uh, they, they can't. And what's keeping them alive, of course, is the, the outside ones, because the inside has become so packed. And moss is uh, going to get acetic in a year, like two years at the most, you'd ever keep them in there, if I don't, I don't grow moss, so. But anyway, you can see why we run into a problem. And where the problem arises is in this thick center part. And uh, it, can't, it can't breathe, and then it's not getting air, and then the roots that are in there, they start to rot. And if there's enough aerial roots and healthy outside roots, then when you transplant, there will be less shock. But if you find you've got gushy roots, and if they've been sitting in water a long time in the store maybe, or uh, then you might have gushy roots. So I just want to get all that out of there. And uh, so we got these Saturday morning. I came home and uh, soaked the bark I knew I would need. And uh, of course, there's lots of air holes. I like lots of air holes in my pots so that the, the air can move through the bark and yeah, it it's, uh, dries out better. Less chance of humidity and rot. In fact, if, you're, if your uh, water is draining right through and you have lots of air, air holes, it's doubtful that the humidity is going to rot any orchids unless your humidity around you is uh, very very high <laughs> which we don't get here so things are looking really good the inside ones I, I see no rot I see some white roots they're white because they're they photosensitize when they get some light and of course these have not been uh, on the inside getting any light, but if they're white and they're fir firm, they're totally healthy. I'm just going to run some water on that to help. It's so packed in there. We're going to have lots of water pretty soon when this um, snow starts melting because if you lay, live on the flats and the lake fills up from all the mountains and uh, yeah, some of the people on the lower, lower areas, they ran into a flooding problem, like a lot of places. Okay, now, I like to leave the stakes in to help. Now, you see, I'm holding on to the stakes while I do this. And um, it's, it's very good because I want it to be beautiful in this pot. It's going to look so nice in the living room. I just the last few pieces. The reason I'm doing this is because um, all those new people that have come and they're scared to do this, this is, this is what I do. There's one rotten one and I usually, if, unless it's awful bad, I won't snip. I'll just pull the soft wet pieces off, leaving that inner, their inner, inner core. So the vellum has had a good soak. I soaked it this morning. There's some more. I soaked it this morning so that it would come out that pot because I had no holes and I couldn't really move it around. So we're almost ready to put it in the pot. There's some stuff way up in there. Okay. 
C, um, find out when your deliveries are. Unless you're looking for a markdown and then you run into more troubles. Not that it can't be done, it can be done, but uh, I, I like to I like to not do that from experience. <laughs> it's so, they're so beautiful. My whole window is just in total bloom right now. And my daughter, um, she's getting some sunlight in her window and she sent me an email the other day. She said, look it, <laughs> she's got spikes coming. She still hasn't got her LED lights. Okay, one last rip. Now this won't need watered. Monday's my watering day. I definitely won't water this for a week. I find that my, the big pots a week is really good. Um, I have they're ha very happy, but the little pots. Now I guess if you find it upon looking, say a month or so after you've um, potted it from from your moss to your bark is if you just dump out half the bark or all the bark, I do it all the time, so, and see how it's doing. And if it does seem dry, then, um, then you have to decide what you want to do, whether you want to give it an extra bit of water, you know, if you're home and you're able to do that um, in the middle of the week, not a full soak in the sink or a bucket, but an extra drink then that would carry it through the watering day. Or if you want to add another um, media in with your bark, and uh, that's totally up to you. And it is good to communicate with other people in your area that are growing orchids, and, and you can see what, they, what they're doing, what works for them. So if you're having trouble and things don't seem to be working for you, hunt around. See who's doing it. See what they're using. What works best in your area. There. So I'm only putting the bark in. There's not. There's lots of air circulation. I'm not worried about that. And I'm trying to get into that center part. That's always a bit of a a hole in there. So I'm putting a little in there. And. Get it sitting high enough here. That's about right. I took the, this is narrows at the bottom, but it holds quite a bit of bark, actually. I took the pot out to the shed where I keep the bark and uh, made sure I had enough, because there have been times when I've gone to do it and then it hasn't. Um, now, am I centered? This is going to be the showpiece in the living room, that's for sure. Okay. So, put that there. So, this is it. There's really no fuss. I mean, um, I've been making all my, my new tags with my butterflies, and they're turning out really nice. I can see and read them from here. I just cut little pieces of plastic, went to the thrift store, got an old, old, I think it had been a file folder, but it was clear plastic, and I cut into little squares, and then I took my little butterfly clips and glued the tag on to the tail of the butterfly, <laughs> and, and some are, the smaller ones have a little, a little uh, stake, so sometimes I'll show you a close-up of that maybe later when I'm got this repotted, I'll give you a close-up of what's happening in the window. So, yeah, I think that's pretty centered. Firm it down a bit. Sometimes you might find it settles a little more, and you know, it, if it does, then you can always add some more bark at a later date. Now, this was just an old heater Jack took apart for parts, because he saves parts for everything. And it was his idea. He said, wouldn't this make a good orchid pot? And I thought it was kind of Asian looking, and I love the Asian look because of the shape of it. And then I was just going to look for a stand for it, and then he made this out of it. The, 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 the wire he used was wavy, and it's, it's called uh, 
barbed wire. It's what the ranchers use around here to when they put their barbed wire fences up. And it's something that uh, strips in, and they're about four feet, four feet long, with two, with four feet. They're actually eight feet, but it's bent over in the center. So he just soldered some of them together, and they're not, they won't rust because they're, they're um, like chicken wire or whatever. They're aluminum. They won't, they won't rust. So um, I painted it up and. They were, they're uh, 99 cents each. How cheap is that? I'm telling you. So really, he used four. So that, the stand, the stand cost, you know, very little. And, uh, and then uh, I painted the pot with a dirty pour. So, it runs right off, so you kind of keep. Uh, uh, it's not like my tiles that I painted. It it w runs right off, so I had it upside down on a bottle or something, and then uh, oh, I know an old paper towel holder. I had it upside down, an old paper towel holder, and uh, kept uh, as the stuff was dripping off. I just kept putting it back. This is the. Uh, uh, it's such a wonderful hobby, you know, it's, uh, we have to share the wonderful things in life. I think the more you enjoy and share the wonderful things, the more we spread joy around instead of, instead of negative thoughts. We put out positive thoughts and, and then we get positive back, even if at times it doesn't, you might not think so. It's. Um, I think it's good. Nurturing. Nurturing is a wonderful thing. And, and of course, they're good for our air. So we're quite happy with that. There, I'll let that settle. And it'll be going in the living room on the table. And I'm going to come and I'm going to just turn the camera around and I'll do a close-up of the new shelf we just put in front of the window. And, uh, yeah, it's beautiful. It's fun to play with pots. Okay. I'll just take you around. I will just have to turn the camera. And you should be able to see the shelf. It's got the three pieces of wood. Okay, there we go. It's got the three pieces of wood holding it up with the wing nuts like you use for a lamp that are in behind the jip rock and it's solid. So now when the blinds come down then um, we'll be able to see wonder if I can show you a, a tag with a name on. There's one on my purple one. See, now, there, there's a butterfly. It doesn't want to come into view, but he has a little tag. I can read it, but you probably can't. And everything is still in bloom since December. And this is why we do it. It's, uh, it's fun. And thanks for joining me, and we'll see you again. Bye for now.